Hey, honey. How are you liking your Moshe by C? Oh, I love it. I mean, it's pretty much perfect. Uh, I just wish it was a little smaller. Ah, that was easy. Somebody here asked for a Meshify C Mini. Oh, wow, you did something useful for once. Nice. Spell check it next time. Whoa! I have a request too! Seriously, Heather? What kind of request was that? You're gonna ruin it for everyone. The customer is always right. Ladies, ladies, there's no need to fight. Oh, oh. Let your voice be heard by visiting the Fractal Design contact page and making a product suggestion, within reason. While you're at it, you can also check out the new Meshify C Mini. Click on the link below to learn more. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be taking a look at this brand new CPU cooler from the folks over at Be Quiet. This is the Dark Rock Pro 4, the long awaited successor to the Dark Rock Pro 3, a very highly regarded CPU cooler. However, this unit brings about some much needed improvements like a new installation process, as well as a brand new heatsink design. Now this is gonna be a pretty straightforward review, but on top of testing the thermals and acoustics of this 250 watt TDP unit, I'm also kind of curious at the end of the video if we can actually get away with running this thing 100% passively by removing both of the fans. I think, I think we might be able to do it, honestly. I mean, it's a pretty fat heat stack, so that's kind of why I'm, I'm curious, but uh, more on that later on. Now before we dive into the installation process, I wanted to quickly go over the unit itself. For starters, we have this dual heatsink design. So you actually get two towers, and uh, they're pretty, pretty fat heatsinks. Um, they have this sort of wave contoured shape to them, and these little dimples that are supposed to encourage air circulation. The fins are treated with a special black coating that actually promotes heat transfer as opposed to some cheaper paint materials that can often insulate the heat. Additionally, we have some fans here. These are Silent Wings 3 high performing fans. You get a 120 on the outside, very standard 25 millimeters thick, and then a 135 millimeter fan on the inside. It's kind of sandwiched in between both of these heatsink towers. Both of the fans are four pin PWM and they have nice black sleeving to match the rest of the cooler. The dual heat sinks are joined by a set of seven copper heat pipes, which also receive the same special black coating that we saw with the fins themselves. You get a copper base plate at the bottom, and finally, a very nice brushed aluminum finish top cover uh, with these various caps that just kind of add to the nice, unique aesthetic. Now, the cooler supports all of today's most popular AMD and Intel sockets, with the exception of Threadripper, and the installation itself is pretty straightforward. Uh, there's a back plate that you have to fasten or secure to the back of your motherboard, and there will be four screws that kind of pop up. You basically have to take four mounting posts, screw those to those screws, and then mount your CPU cooler onto your CPU with some thermal paste, of course. Next, you lay a single crossbar over your copper plate and prepare for screwing. There's one screw on either side of that crossbar that needs to be accessed, and the only way to reach them is by unscrewing two of the caps on top of your aluminum cover and using the included screwdriver to bolt them down. Afterwards, you can mount both of the fans using the included wire brackets, which are kind of a pain to use and can easily scratch some of the special coating off of the fin stack if you're not careful. If the outer fan is interfering with your RAM modules, however, these wire brackets do allow enough flexibility to lift that fan ever so slightly so that you have a bit more clearance for your memory. It's also nice that Be Quiet includes an additional set of brackets if you wanted to mount another 120 millimeter fan to the other side of the heatsink. Last but not least, connect both of the fans to the included fan splitter and then to your motherboard CPU fan header. The installation does take a bit longer than most air coolers I'm used to, but overall the process has been simplified and is much more seamless than that of its predecessor. Now that it's installed, let's go ahead and fire it up and do some testing. All right guys, so I currently have our Core i7-8700K 6 core 12 thread part overclocked at the moment to 4.8 gigahertz at 1.25 volts. And that's on top of a Gigabyte Aorus Z370 Gaming 7 motherboard, paired with 16 gigs of G-Scale Trident Z RGB DDR4 at 3200 speed with the help of the built-in XMP profile. Uh, we also have a GTX 1070 for the win card from EVGA that's running at stock settings, no overclocking on the GPU. And that's all being sort of encased inside of this mid tower from Fractal Design, their Define S. And I've actually removed all the top Modjuvent covers just so we have uh, as much airflow going in and out of the case as possible. 
Taking a look at the screen here, evidently we have GTA 5 running at 2560 by 1080, that's 21 by 9 or an ultra wide resolution. And you can see we have an OSD here that has some diagnostics, including our package temp on the CPU, which is hovering around 60 degrees Celsius right now, which is Fantastic for an overclocked 8700K. Um, over here in hardware monitor, 71 degrees Celsius is what the uh, is the hottest our package got at any time, um, which actually isn't bad at all, especially when you consider that it was only at that temperature for about a second or two before diving back down to its average range, which again is around 60C. So what I wanna do now is pop off one of those uh, fans. Actually, we'll start with the 120 that's on the outside of the cooler, just to see how it affects our thermals. I'm guessing that we'll increase a few degrees, uh, but also reduce some of the noise levels. And that's what got me so excited at the beginning of this video was to see if we could run this cooler 100% passively. But now that I have it up and running under full load about an arm's length away from me, it's already really, really quiet. And I don't see the need to remove any fans or tweak it further for acoustic purposes. That being said, I'm gonna try it anyway because I said I would and because I can. So let's go ahead and start off with popping off that, <laughs> popping off, start off by popping off that 120 millimeter fan. All right, so run around the streets of Los Santos once again here, uh, this time with one less fan. And it looks like we're still hovering at around 60 degrees Celsius. Max package temp, 70C, same as it was last time and there are no ill signs, no thermal throttling of any kind. Uh, things are looking good. I think we're ready to remove the second fan to see, once and for all, if the dual heatsink towers can hold their own. All right guys, so we've just booted into Windows with zero fans, we're now completely passive, and we're launching Steam right now. We're not even in game, and we're already hovering at around 82, 83 degrees Celsius. I think we've reached uh, a tipping point here and uh, we cannot go any further. In fact, the cameras didn't catch this, but we've already besotted three times since removing uh, the second fan. I'm gonna try seeing what happens if I if I launch GTA 5. I'm guessing another besod. And I think the reason why we were so easily able to ditch that 120 millimeter fan and not the 135 is because the 135 is right in the middle. It's actually serving a dual purpose sitting in between both of the heatsink towers. It's pulling air through one heatsink and pushing air through the other. So it's kind of serving two purposes and it's working twice as hard, if you will, as that outer 120 millimeter fan, which is why it makes such a huge difference. Please, PC gods, please, please let us not be sod. Oh God, 89, we just hit 89 and there's the B sod. <laughs> so clearly everything I just said uh, rings pretty true here as demonstrated by this beautiful super ultra wide B sod. Um, so immersive. So closing things out here, I'm very impressed with the cooler overall. It's definitely exceeded my expectations in almost every area. Uh, performance is top notch here. Honestly, I'd put it on par with a lot of 240 millimeter liquid AIOs. While I haven't tested against those directly in this video, obviously, um, from my experience, it is best in class in terms of a uh, air CPU cooler. Uh, additionally, um, the high TDP at 250 watts also indicates that you might wanna pair this cooler with a warmer running CPU. It'd be kind of wasted on something like a Ryzen 5 CPU or uh, maybe a Core i5-8400, for example. But if you're gonna be doing some serious overclocking with a higher TDP chip, this is definitely uh, in the running as a potential contender. Uh, additionally, it's quiet AF. I mean, this thing is almost silent. Even if you have a case that has uh, a lot of open air ventilation, um, under load, you're not gonna really notice it that much. And when you do, it's not gonna be distracting. It's sort of a low kind of calming hum uh, overall. And it's, uh, it's, it's not gonna take you out of the game whatsoever. The installation process Process has been much improved upon since the last generation. Um, it's still a bit long-winded, but overall, I'm very happy with the changes that Be Quiet made there. And then finally, I think it just looks great. I think for the money, it's one of the best looking air coolers on the market. Definitely blows any Noctua coolers out of the water. Uh, Noctua coolers perform fantastic uh, in their own right, but from an aesthetic department, this thing definitely takes the cake between the two. So those are my thoughts in a nutshell on the Dark Rock Pro 4, guys. Let me know if you feel the same way in the comments below. Curious to hear what you have to say about this one. Also, feel free to toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it and feel free to get subscribed to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. You can also follow me on Floatplane if you want to catch my videos a week early without ads for three bucks a month. I'll put a link in the description for that. Till next time guys, thanks for tuning in. Have a good one and I'll see y'all in the next video.